Wow, so I've been putting this off, so let's dive into the Runaways. So, right out of the gate, let me say, I really enjoyed the first few episodes. I was lucky enough to get a preview, and they left me wanting more right away. To be totally fair and transparent, I never actually read the books. My personal teen angst had already long phased out in 03 when they were released, so I've known them via fan energy and this sort of general love that everybody has for them over the years. I was fairly familiar with the characters and the abilities, but I wasn't what I would call a fan. This has wholeheartedly changed now. Wow, the first four episodes were a lot of fun. Not just good, excellent. Good enough to drive me over to my comics provider and read up the first big story arc. And now, I'm a fan. A big fan. Thanks, Hulu. So let's not get ahead of ourselves. First, let's talk about the show. The show is expected is full of that teenage angst you would expect. It's already been called Marvel's The OC or 90210, and this seems fair at first, but the show really doesn't devolve too far into this unneeded or silly drama or that cheese that can bog down some of these types of shows, which isn't really something that most geekdom is going to like. Think about Smallville level. Maybe a little less, and definitely less hammy. It's there, but not overwhelming or overdone at all. I'm decades out of high school, and I didn't find the angst or the teen issues overwhelming or distracting at all. Sometimes, shows like this are more worried about hitting that mark than making a good show, and this wasn't the case. I remained pretty engaged throughout the four episodes and even found myself thinking, hey, I think my daughters would even like this. Now, this is non-spoiler, so I'm not going to delve too far into any details of the show or the plot, but it is drawn very closely from the first arc of the comic series. The story progresses fairly identically to the comics, with a few changes to help facilitate the story. The changes didn't bother me as much as it might have with other IPs because I was less familiar or invested in the characters beforehand, but from what I could tell, everything was fine. Probably the biggest difference between the comics and TV show is the focus on the parents, giving them a bit more depth and presence in the story than in the books. The pilot episode is actually two parts, with the part two focusing on the parents of the pride. All the performers associated with the parents are pretty awesome, and I won't delve too deep into them except for one, but first we're going to look at the kids. So this cast is overall great. The primary cast of teens are... I'm going to butcher names, so be kind. Renzi Feliz of Teen Wolf fame as Alex Wilder. Lyrica Akeno as the brooding Nico Minoru. Virginia Garner, known from Project Almanac, or Carolina Dean. Ariella Barr, who actually appeared in the new 90210 in 2008 as Gert Yorks. Gary Sulkin from MTV's Faking It as Chase Stein. And Allegra Acosto as Molly Hernandez. She was in Nickelodeon's One Hundred Things to Do Before High School. This whole team is fantastic together. And even though they really are individual misfits in their own right, every one of them, they all really work well together. Let's talk about an MCU connection that isn't really a spoiler and it's something to pay attention to. Brittany Ishibashi is playing the mother of Nico, Tina Minoru. This isn't the first time this character has appeared in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Although played by a different actress, she appeared in 2016's Doctor Strange and was part of the Hong Kong Sanctum. If you remember, the Sanctum was destroyed by Cassilius and eventually was revived by the Aya Agamotto aka Timestone in the hands of Stephen Strange. It's really unclear if this is supposed to be the same character and be the MCU connector or if it's just one of those TV vs movie division things that does kind of get in the way of things. Just something to look for. And while we're on the topic, hey Captain Mouse here, why don't we just go ahead and give this all to Kevin Feige. Thanks. I want to keep this as close to spoiler free as possible. It's a good show. So we won't delve too far into the story because there are several threads with so many characters and each is spoiler ridden and may reveal unwanted stuff. But. If you are a fan of the comics, you're going to be pretty happy. It does take some liberties with the story, but it is following the source material very closely and that seems to make for a successful franchise more often than not. As I watched it, I thought to myself, this must be really following the books very closely, even though at that particular time I had not read any of the source material. It has a comic book vibe and feel to the ebb and flow of the episodes. In the best possible way, it feels like a show in a superhero world without being too much of a superhero show. So what's the final verdict? Great show. Watch it. Heck, it's probably good enough to take the risk to get Hulu if you don't already have it. And this is from a guy who just paid his Hulu bill, so I'm not shrilling for them. The show was pretty well produced, it's clean, and at least the four, first four episodes were a lot of fun. If you were in that over 35 crowd, you won't feel left out of the show at all. And if you're on the younger side, what well, to quote my 14-year-old, you'll probably be shook. 
Even though I've only seen the first four episodes, I'm going to go ahead and give them an 8 out of 10. And we'll have to see how the rest of it pans out. Maybe we'll do a follow-up video then. If you like this video, make sure you click like below and click subscribe. And remember, if you don't ring that bell, you don't get any updates. Peace.